Good morning guys. So this video is about why a chainsaw chain will spin at idle. So I've got my saw here and uh, what we're going to do, this saw should idle at 2,500 RPM and the chain should start to engage or the clutch should start to engage at about 3,500 RPM. So if at any point that that clutch is engaging earlier, before 3,500 RPM, we have an issue and we're going to diagnose that issue, but I'm just going to show you, I've got the tachometer, we'll hold it, we'll turn the idle screw uh, in until the RPMs come up to the point where the clutch starts to spin and we'll just see at what point this engages. Should be 3,500, let's have a look. So in fact, actually, it's basically just started to engage at two and a half thousand, which is where it should be idling, where the idle should be set. So uh, let's go inside. Let's take the saw apart. Well, the clutch area apart, and we'll discuss the reasons why that could be happening. And uh, we'll make the fix. We'll come back out and we'll double check it. Okay, we are back inside now. So there are really the three main reasons why this could occur. The first one and most simply is your idle speed screw, which is normally designated with either an LA for still or a T, I believe, for Husqvarna, could just be a little bit too far in. As you turn that screw in, essentially what it does is it opens the butterfly inside the, the throat of the carburetor and it just allows more air and thus more fuel to come in. Check your manual. Your manual have specs for what your idle should be. And if you're close with that with your tachometer, then that's not your issue. The second one could be the clutch bearing. There is a small roller bearing inside here, inside the clutch uh, drum, actually. It kind of it goes on the crankshaft, the clutch drum goes over it, and in between those two, you have this little needle bearing. If that bearing is either broken or hasn't been greased, and thus it's seizing slightly, you're not getting the spin between the crankshaft and the clutch itself. Essentially, you've got that formed as one. So as the crankshaft turns, the clutch will turn, and then your bar and well, your chain on the bar will turn. But I know that's not the case here either, because I've already serviced that. I've already greased the bearing. I've checked that it works fine, and it does. The last one is worn or broken clutch springs. Generally, most clutches have three springs. Sometimes they'll have one that goes around, kind of in a circumference around the clutch, and that will then expand. Uh, this is an old saw, and uh, over time, clutch springs will wear if they get hot or, or simply just through wear, constant expansion and contraction. They can tend to lose that tension and it doesn't take as many RPMs for those springs to allow those clutch shoes to come out and grab the drum. And that's what's happening in this case. So we have two and a half thousand RPM is essentially where this is starting to engage. It should engage at three thousand or th sorry, three and a half thousand rpm so let's change those springs out we'll go back outside and then we'll just turn the idle speed screw in and see at what point that chain starts to spin so this is our clutch and uh, you can see that the springs are intact they're not broken but we have three replacement springs here so we're going to place those on Okay, that's idle speed there. That's where it should be. Chain's not moving. Let's turn it up and see where it starts to engage. swapping those springs over I think they cost me a couple of dollars each and now the saw is safe you, you have a saw running with uh, idling with the uh, chain spinning you're just asking for trouble a few dollars a few minutes and the job's done there we go hope you enjoyed it 